Fencing with a solo rapier is great fun, but when you add a sidearm the fun immediately doubles. Without any doubt the most popular sidearm in combination with the rapier is the dagger. If there is another one that should totally deserve our attention, it's definitely the cape. It's not only super fun to fight with, but it's the only sidearm that will make you super fabulous. Fabrice says that the sword and cape was a very noble and popular weapon combination. Unlike the dagger, the cape wasn't an object of any legal restrictions and was regularly worn by folks everywhere. And above all, it's super simple to learn. When using the cape, forget about while spinning and turning. Instead, extend your cape arm in front of your body and use it to cover as much area as you can. The more you extend your arm, the higher you hold it, the more you limit possible targets on your body. Try to think of the cape more as of a shield than an active weapon. Assuming positions or guards is the same like in solo rapier or in the combination with the dagger, except the fact that the cape shields a much larger area of the body. In all positions, use it to cover your most vulnerable openings by holding the cape extended in front of you and bending your body a little bit. There are not that many techniques described with a cape. The reason is simple. You can apply most of what you've learned with the solo rapier or rapier and dagger. Of course, you have to keep in mind a few additional principles. Firstly, you need to learn your weaknesses and openings with the individual guards and positions. When you understand that, and when you will learn how to create an opening, learn to read the same from your opponent's stances. Secondly, you need to learn to hold the cape in front of your body in most cases. The more you hold it in front of you, the better barrier it becomes. Thirdly, don't use the cape to parry cuts unless there is no other way. A hit to the forearm can seriously hurt you. When pairing cuts, use either your sword or a combination of sword and cape, like I will show you in a short while. Fourthly, when pairing thrusts, try to do as small movements as possible. When you move your cape a lot, you need to keep in mind you're creating an opening somewhere else. Furthermore, since the cape is made out of textile, moving it swiftly can result in obstructed vision, which is not a rare occurrence in rapier and cape. Fifthly, don't spin or twist the cape. Spinning the cape creates tempos or occasions for an attack and makes you much more predictable. There are certain ways of throwing the cape. The most typical are covering the opponent with an immediate follow-up. Start with your cape on your shoulder or in your hand, wipe it against your opponent's weapon so it becomes entangled and finish them with a thrust or a cut. The other funky manner is throwing the whole cape against your opponent using your rapier as a catapult. Roll the cape carefully a few times around and when it acquires mass, stick it on the point of your weapon and use it as a catapult. You would be surprised how easy it is to make a precise hit in this manner. And yes, this is a legit historical technique. Probably the best principle in rapier and cape is called tutta coperta, which means joining your weapons and covering everything. This can be done in a few ways, like launching the thrust with a cape arm joint as shown in the techniques number 2 and 4, or by covering yourself and pairing cuts like you can see now. Raise your weapon and forearm together to both cover yourself and assume a strong position, and then counter with a cut to the head, a cut to the leg or with a thrust. You should ideally always leave your cape attached to the opponent's weapon in order to control them and remain covered. This technique is very useful and you should be able to perform it from any starting position. Rapier and cape is in my opinion much easier to learn properly than rapier and dagger. The cape creates a much better barrier and requires to follow only a few basic principles as mentioned earlier. Of course, nothing is ideal and if you let your opponent disrupt your structure and position, you can become an easy target. Try to remain calm, try not to move too much with the cape and think ahead. Possible actions of your opponent, if they are using the same sidearm as you, are the same as yours. The more you will understand how one thing leads to another, the easier it will be to read the same from your opponent. Notice their openings, notice their guards. It's not easy to hold the cape straight in front of you all the time. When you notice your opponent's arm is getting weak and they are losing cover, immediately go for it with a high thrust in one or two and finish them with another cut or thrust. Use the cavazioni or the disengagements to confuse them. Notice if they have their weapons joined or not and act accordingly. 
fencing really is not that different from a game of chess, where your success is measured by your ability to read and predict your opponent's moves many rounds ahead. Fencing with rapier and cape is really entertaining. It may not be as popular as fencing with the dagger, but no dagger is going to make you look as slick and fabulous as will the cape. So don't hesitate, get yourself one. Remember the six principles and be cool. And when I say cool, I mean really, really cool. Thank you for watching my video, hope you enjoyed it and see you soon.